talk about this project that you guys are working on now, the, the, this props project, and and how you guys are, you know, the technology, uh, or, or how you guys are taking it from the current you now into the new Rise app. Sure. Right. So 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 talk about what the because you guys I have you now, and then you guys have the props platform and then you guys have the rise app so can you clarify that for the audience sure so you now is our existing product and that's a live streaming app that we've been running for a few years mm -hmm. and what's really interesting about that app is it is a virtual economy so you have people can buy a virtual currency they can spend it in rooms giving gifts to broadcasters and then those broadcasters can earn Mm -hmm. um, and we've been running this, and uh, we do revenue at about two million a month, I think, these days. That's, um, a, that's a lot. That's yeah, a lot. yeah. So we're a real company. You know? and, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's been working well, but I think one of the things we kind of realized a few things. One is like it was a limited set of users that could earn. So it's like these partners that we have to sign and do all this kind of onboarding with them. Uh, and the uh, so so can you give an example uh, so that our, our audience can understand you know like let's say that we uh, just take an example of a broadcaster that is doing well and then what you, the process they have to go through to become a partner and then to earn revenues from from you now yeah so they would have to kind of prove that they could do a certain amount of uh, consecutive viewers every time they went mm -hmm. on. Um, and then they would have to kind of apply and, and fill out forms and there would be a back back and forth and then you know we'd have to kind of figure out their bank account and uh, a lot of all, friction yeah a lot of friction there and, and, it, and it meant that it kind of it was like this limited thing um, that was only for a few people and the other thing is that there's always this battle you know because in this model we are like a rent collector we you know we needed to take our cut of the revenues and so there's always this back and forth of like, even though we want to support these creators, we are kind of taking uh, some of the money there. So we started to explore kind of what could really open that up. How could we allow anyone to earn? Um, and how could we uh, really evolve our business model so that we're aligned with these creators? And okay. we're, you know, we're both winning at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. And that's when we started to kind of explore tokens and really started to build out uh, the props project. And so props, the goal of props is to create essentially this decentralized ecosystem of, of video apps and really rethink kind of how digital media works um, and really uh, you know, change our business model from collecting rent on these payouts to creators and being more stewards of this currency um, and, and allowing the creators to get paid in this currency that they can either go and cash out and then there's nothing different to kind of how it works today or they can hold that currency and when they hold that currency it sort of unlocks various benefits within the, uh, the platform giving them status, giving them influence over who's trending, helping their uh, content get seen mm -hmm. but also as the network grows, as they put all that effort into growing this system you know, they kind of have a stake in this uh, this platform uh, rather than kind of the old system where they just get, you know, a check, but if the, if the system grows, they can't really... Uh, so it, it's that. almost a form of equity, you're saying? Well, it's, it's very different, um, but in a sense, yeah, in, in the sense that as this thing grows, um, they can stand to benefit. Um, but it's you know very much this uh, you know this token that uh, they actually want to use within the uh, within the system, and so there's less incentive for them to cash it out, but there is incentive for them to uh, kind of hold on to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. So so like we've looked at other projects in the past, other cryptocurrency projects, and there's like dozens of them coming out every day now. Yeah. And it's just it's just a lot of noise, you know. And one of the things that we noticed that got our attention, you know with you guys is that you know, in addition to the two million dollars in revenues each month, that's like a huge green flag for us. Like, hey, this is a real company, this is a real business, real people, like all the people that's working back there right now behind us, right? But the thing that really caught our attention was that you guys actually have a token right now that you guys are using in the current system right now, in the current YouNow system. Yeah. So it's not like you guys is out of thin air just made up like, hey, we need tokens, uh, cryptocurrency tokens. You guys actually have a token right now. It's just not a cryptocurrency token. And you guys are basically building a new platform 
with a new token, and that new token is based on the cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Exactly. So we right now have a virtual currency, but that kind of virtual currency is like locked within our application. And so what do you guys call them, like gold bars? Yeah, so on you now they're called bars. Um, and yeah, you can spend these bars, and mm -hmm. what, what's really good about virtual currencies is uh, you can use the in app, the Apple in app purchases to really e easily purchase them um, and then use them. But they're kind of locked within the. Uh, in that network and that ecosystem. Within that, well, it's locked within a single app. And it's really hard to have multiple apps using the same virtual currency. And so that's what's really interesting about a cryptocurrency is that it's kind of maintained in this decentralized way on this network. And you can actually have multiple apps that are kind of tying into it. And what we do is actually really interesting. Um, is within the, the Rise app, which, we've, which is essentially almost like the UNOW 2.0, um, that we've taken all the learnings from UNOW and are designing this new app with the cryptocurrency baked in, it essentially uses a two-currency model. So you still have a virtual currency, a non-cryptocurrency that uh, any these mainstream users that have no idea what crypto is, they can come along and buy this virtual currency and kind of play the game. They can buy, they can buy gifts for the uh, broadcaster and uh, they don't need to set up a wallet or any of these uh, crazy complicated things. But that, the revenue that's generated from this virtual currency, we then use to purchase props from the market and pay out to uh, the creators. So these people that don't really understand uh, crypto yet, and there's not that roadblock of the complexity, they are actually helping to drive demand for the props currency and helping the creators to earn uh, in this currency. So you have a really easy way to get in without this wall of complexity. But as you start to understand the system, as you start to participate, then you earn a prop and you're like, what is this? And we gradually kind of hold your hand and we say, okay, this is a cryptocurrency. Like you actually are holding it on your device and we can gradually walk them through. We don't have to kind of shove it in their face as soon as they uh, open the app. And I think that's a really important way to bring mainstream users into crypto is you kind of have this, this kind of gradual uh, introduction to it rather than it's really in their face. So really, y'all are solving, it's what Dash always talks about. For people that are not in crypto, you're seeing 60,000 transactions a day? Yeah. Of people that know nothing about crypto that are going to be able to use crypto, right? You're, yeah. you're making it simple for them. Exactly. Right? I mean, that's another yeah. point, which is like at that volume of transactions, no yeah. blockchain uh, kind of at this point is really, I mean, there's some really interesting things coming up around Plasma and uh, kind of state channels that I think will allow this volume of transactions to ha happen on chain. But this is kind of a way for us to have the, the virtual currency and, and people playing, but it actually then drives these daily payouts of the cryptocurrency um, that we're doing of props. So uh, just so that if I'm a content creator, I have props now in my in my uh, uh, my account, uh, so I need to claim them in order, and these props will be sent to a wallet of address that I'm. Is that the next step then after I yeah, earn these props? Yeah. So, so what? I mean, we're toying around with what the user experience is, but more um, or less every day you, you'll get them, and and we're working towards is they'll just automatically be deposited mm -hmm. in your wallet. Because the payout right now with the the you the current system that you guys have right now the younow.com system yeah. when, where people get the bars and the, and the gifts and everything, there's like a week or two week yeah, turnaround yeah. time before I, the payout time? Yeah, and I, I think it's like a monthly payout. Whereas okay. with this, it's, it's every day. Okay, uh, so that's gonna be huge. Yeah, I mean, for a lot of these creators, like it's their living. Okay. Um, and so we're really thinking uh, kind of, you know, how do you make that experience easy for them? I think there's some, it's still early days, but we're you know we're exploring things like some of these uh, these cards that are allowing you to spend crypto. Yeah. And I think that long term, you can imagine you know a creator who's using this app, uh, earning in this cryptocurrency, and then holding a card that they can go to the store and, and buy something and, and buy something with like it. a BitPay Visa card or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, because I, there's several. Uh, Bitcoin ATM, uh, Bitcoin debit cards mm -hmm. on the market already. Exactly. Yeah. So I think yeah, they they so, and the support for ERC twenty tokens is is not quite there, but there's a few of them, and I think like that space is evolving uh -huh. uh, very quickly, and that will be kind of an interesting way. Uh, for so so w one of the biggest challenges in crypto right now is 
getting people to actually use the technology. Yeah. And the way that you guys are approaching it, the the user actually never experiences the cryptocurrency component. So it's like that's a huge hurdle that you, you guys have just eliminated. This might be I like everybody's asking for the uh, the Netscape moment or the moment that people start adopting cryptocurrencies and using it, right? This is one of the the better scenarios that I can think of because you guys have a community of users that's already using a token. Now they're just using the token except it has cryptocurrency technology behind it. Yeah, I think, uh, I forget who, who said this, but the, you know, a lot of uh, the experts, when you ask them like, when's blockchain gonna go mainstream? And the answer is like, when people don't even realize that a blockchain is being used behind the scenes, it's just mm -hmm. the best user experience. Um, and I think that's kind of what we're striving, like especially for an app to uh, kind of really uh, kind of get those network effects and have people using it, <laughs> we're still in the very early days. Like I'd say like most people have heard of Bitcoin, Ethereum kind of sounds really scary to, uh, yeah. to yeah, most. Yeah. It's like your money's going into the ether. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Okay, so you, start, you talk about the, 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 the user interface and stuff, and, and I have a question for uh, Olivia here. You know, like when I was testing the Rise app, Right, like I'm able to pull people from the audience onto the stage or onto the room like very quickly and pull it back, and then, I mean, it's it's in everything's in real time, and like how how are you guys doing that? Because like in when I use Google Hangouts or any of that, it's not in real time, and it's not it's kind of buggy and stuff. So what are you guys doing behind the scenes, or is that a secret sauce that you guys cannot share or? So I, I can't answer to the uh, uh, infrastructure thing that the, uh, the tech team has built, but I can just uh, share something in the way we started the project. Where uh, so a few months ago um, we started. I'm sorry for uh, saying this one, but we started it as a hackathon. Uh, is that we knew that we want to have like multiple video uh, on on the screen mm -hmm. and be able to have some cool interactions. Uh, with them, like drag drop, uh, creating uh, live groups on on the screen, but we we were not exactly sure of what we could do. So we made uh, uh, a three-day intense hackathon with the tech team and design team together, just to test uh, many things that we could do. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the of the um, three days, we didn't have the technology ready, but we knew that we could build it. Okay. And, uh, and, so, and the, so that was like an in-house hackathon that you yeah, guys yeah. put together? I mean, we're basically just really exploring kind of what's the edge of what's possible with the devices. And I can give you like some hints at some of the secret sources. Like we're almost like pre-warming. We know this video is going to get ready. So we're getting it ready in the background. And we're utilizing some of like a lot of live streaming kind of has happened uh, over some of like older technologies like RTMP, which still requires flash and then you have these other formats uh I'll just drop more acronyms hls yeah. is one that people have used but we're kind of using uh webrtc which is one of the newer uh technologies and traditionally it's been for group video but we basically figured out a way to take the sort of group video experience and scale it where you can have that video going to multiple people and you can like the the infrastructure kind of abstracts the complexity where on your phone you just pick you know which people you want to be watching in any combination and it, it's streaming those videos uh, really fast so it's kind of like taking some existing technology and uh, kind of molding it to kind of get the most out of it okay okay so when y'all open up the developer platform you'll have rise on there but someone could build like a a go-to meeting on this platform right yeah so i think just to clarify you know with the props and with the rise Props is essentially the, the platform around the currency. Um, and Rise is the first app that we're introducing that uses the props currency and uses this many-to-many -many video technology. Okay, so but uh, any one of us, if we know how to do it, we can build separate apps on top of the, the, the props exactly. network or the, net, the props platform. Exactly, so if you know how to build kind of your own full apps and you want complete control over the experience, you can create your your own application kind of utilizing props and the many-to-many -many video. Alternatively, okay. if you're kind of more of a you know, like amateur 
Additionally, within the Rise app, we'll allow developers to kind of customize some of the things within Rise. So that's like a little bit more amateur, like in the same way that you have broadcasters or yourselves, you can just go to YouTube and just start, you know, and it's really easy. Um, that's what you'll be able to do kind mm -hmm. of within Rise, like more minor customization, but you, you don't have to worry about kind of some of the infrastructure stuff uh, behind the scenes. You're just tweaking it and maybe uh, kind of designing a little game like the way we like to think about it like because we have this this kind of technology where everyone can kind of can be on video we want it we, we really want it to essentially like mimic a real world conversation like what we're doing now like mm -hmm. you can either be in a group all chatting together or maybe we decide to like play a card game or some or a party game or whatever it may be or a game show you know like any of these kind of configurations with some basic rules on top of like which video is live and, and maybe some some interface whether it's like a voting system or anything like that we wanted to sort of be flexible that people so, can kind of recreate these things so speak, uh, you mentioned about the voting system right and you had shared a story with me offline about how I think it was America's Got Talent or which yeah. one of those uh, uh, shows they wanted you guys to build a yes and no voting button yeah, so we've actually, on You Now, mm -hmm. been working with America's Got Talent. They do auditions on You Now where kind of anyone can uh, uh, audition and they select some of those people to go uh, into the, you know, into the next rounds. And they wanted some way for the audience to participate and say if they liked, you know, yes or no. But that was kind of hard for us because You Now, you know, it was, it was designed to kind of like it had a single use case, which was like the just kind of people well, talking. Well, it sounds like it's a built as a monolithic application, right? Exactly. Not in modules and, and extensions and APIs that other software could plug into. It was just one big code base. Is that more or less what you know? Yeah, it was, it was much yeah. less prone to be able to customize. Yeah. And so uh -huh. with Rise, someone could very easily come along and, and build this additional functionality and have a special room that allowed people to audition and, and the crowd to vote and then have a different room that had completely different functionality. And, and so what you're saying is that with the benefit of the props uh, platform is that when a company like America's Got Talent, they don't have to come and hire you guys or request it from you guys. They can have in-house yeah. engineers just build it themselves or they can hire an outside firm such as a Kirk's firm here to build it for them. Absolutely. They don't have to wait for you to do it. Absolutely, yeah. We okay. don't, you know, we don't, we don't want to be the bottleneck. Anyway, okay. We kind of want to open it up so people can innovate and do things that we kind of hadn't thought of, and they're not waiting on us. And, and, and who is that? Is the platform available to anybody to build apps on top of it, or do they have to come get permission from you to build the app on top of it? So where we want to get to is where anyone uh, can build on top of it. I mean, I think it's going to be gradually rolled out, and we're going to start with some select partners to evolve it and learn exactly what the. Uh, the use cases yeah. are, um, and there's also uh, a reward system which uh, we haven't talked about yet, which is you know a significant chunk of the currency supply is sort of held and 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 used to incentivize people who are contrib contributing content. Yeah. So in a sense, like our creators are our miners; they're the one creating value and and earning uh, these sort of currency, and so. You know, we're still exploring uh, kind of exactly how that works across different apps, but the ultimate goal is that anyone can uh, create an app uh, on top of this. So ba basically, if someone right now that's listening to us right now and they don't have the resources to, let's say, buy the or invest into the props token, but they have engin software engineering skills or content creation skills, they can just wait until you guys release the tokens yep. and then actually go and build an app. Yep. Or build a, 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 or create content on it and still earn the props. Exactly. Yeah. So there's, we want it to to make it easy. Um, and so yeah, the first two ones that we're starting with is, is people who create content or people who develop. Mm -hmm. And we're also exploring other ways where if you're contributing, like so whether it's whether you maybe brought some friends, you can earn f earn for that. Or maybe if you're doing moderation, then you are mm -hmm. earning in props. And so anyone who's contributing uh, to the network, you can earn. Get so earn yeah, props. Absolutely. Okay. I right, talk a little bit about the um, Rise wallet security or, and how you guys um, plan on setting it up because you have millions of registered users on, um, on the current YouNow platform that are going to be migrating over to the, the um, Rise platform, uh, app, yep. right? 
So talk about how the broadcasters are going to be migrated over and how the viewers or the users are going to be migrated over. Yeah, so I think it's, it's something that we're really excited about is like, this will be for these millions of users, their mm -hmm. first exposure to crypto, which we also take very seriously. So I think what's really important to the design is that it's this gradual introduction. Like we're not upfront hitting you with like, write down these 12 words, which you know, yeah. so many users just like, they've never encountered this before. Mm -hmm. And if they, if you did that, they're probably gonna take a screenshot of it or write it down on a piece of paper or text file and, 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 and not keep it very secure. So the first piece is that when you download and install the app, you don't need to know anything about crypto. You're just starting to play. Like I was saying, uh, another time you, you can just kind of interact with the system uh, kind of without even knowing that there's crypto there. So we're not scaring anyone off with, the, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know if I want to use this app. Um, but then as you earn your kind of first dollar uh, in crypto, then we start to introduce you and say, hey, you just earned this coin. Uh, we explain to a little bit about you and we actually create an automatic uh, uh, wallet on, on device that allows you to instantly sort of start uh, holding that, uh, holding the cryptocurrency. And so then as, you know, as someone starts to earn more, you know, because, you know, it's essentially a hot wallet uh, kind of on your device. But as someone starts to earn more, then we start to hold their hand and teach them more about security um, and potentially run them through how they can utilize a hardware wallet uh, like Ledger or something else. And they can steal any, any of the props that they're holding in a kind of off device wallet in a more sort of a secure environment, they can still link it to their account and kind of unlock the status from holding those props. So it's like this gradual holding of their hand, getting them to know it um, so that it's really sort of easy. And, uh, so so if someone basically if someone has a, a large props account, yeah. a broadcaster, you, you guys, because I know that you guys have a team right now, a support team that supports all the big broadcasters. Yep. So basically, if they get to the point where they have big amounts of props, your support team is going to make sure that they have proper security behind it. Yeah, I think the plan is even to send them a free ledger. I think, uh, you know, if they're creating a lot of value and uh, kind of walk them through how okay. it works. Um, and. And yeah, I think uh, you really want to strike that balance between usability and security. So I, I think your, your philosophy, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like when there's very little money involved, usability takes precedence over security. And as the amount of crypto increases, mm -hmm. it's the security, uh, the importance of security rises relative to usability. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's the balance you're trying to find is that, I, you know, I, I only got like five bucks worth of props it's more important that it's usable than it is secure because it's not really a big deal if I lose it, right? But if I'm having thousands of dollars worth of props now, yeah, perhaps I should start taking, like getting a ledger or hardware wallet to secure yeah. that, yeah. It's 100% right. Mm -hmm. um, like we don't want to hit them with this wall and mm -hmm. scare them off yeah. with all these uh, requirements yeah. and we want them to be able to use it, you know? Mm -hmm. That experience yeah, when sure. you like make your first kind of crypto mm -hmm. transaction and you you know you see that it gets confirmed and you're yeah. like wow this like thing like actually works um, you know we want that to be you know a quick and easy process no like setup yeah. you know we don't you know and a lot of our users are mobile only right they don't really use computers mm -hmm. and so it's really about a kind of gradual i mean it's still secure you know we're doing a lot to make sure that this on device wallet is using all of the best practices mm -hmm. but at the same time you know, a lot of these users are kind of used to more traditional services where they forget their password and they're like, oh, if they reset, email you, yeah. I'm like, please reset my password. And it's like, well, when you're encrypting, you know, these wallets with passwords, mm -hmm. um, you can't. And so we're toying around with the various things, you know, we were talking about how you can utilize um, where you have these trusted uh, people on the network that can verify that yes, it's you and you've lost the key mm -hmm. and you can access an emergency one you know, all these techniques where you're actually using like a proxy wallet on top of the actual uh, keys. So when those two people verify, there's, there's ways to get at it. So we're exploring like how we can abstract the complexity and from a user's perspective, it just feels, you know, very much like kind of web services that they've used in mm -hmm. the past, uh, but they are actually kind of holding uh, crypto and, and 
catch you know catching that bug, taking the red pill as uh, <laughs> as, as you were saying. It's kind of good for crypto because you're getting people that aren't into crypto once they get once for an influencer that acquires enough that you start educating them. They'll start educating their audience. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes, and they will need to because if they start earning a significant amount of props, they will want to cash some of that out to buy stuff, right? Yeah. We all have bills to pay, so they at that point they almost they need to learn. They need to be educated in order to claim uh, the value. They want to spend the value that they've earned, um, and that's that's going to be, I think, a, a, a challenge to get that experience. Right. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think uh, you know we're also exploring things uh, like Shapeshift to help them kind of swap mm-hmm. it in order to get get it out and use something like whether it's Coinbase that'll allow you mm-hmm. to actually turn. You, you, you might even consider like one of these Bitcoin, AT, you know, besides giving them a free ledger, maybe giving them a Bitcoin ATM card yep. that you can do all the trade, you know, turn the props into Bitcoin or Ether, and then turn those into like a Visa or Mastercard that they can go buy something with it's definitely on the cards that's something that so okay so the people let's say that i'm a broadcaster Mm -hmm. that's currently broadcasting on your current system on your current you now platform yep right how like one of the first things that come to my mind is that i have a certain amount of status Mm -hmm. i sort of have a certain amount of crowns that dictate you know how high i am on the social ranking like how does that migrate over to the rise app Right. Am I going to lose all that as a broadcaster on the U now, or no. what's what's the game plan for that? So yeah, we have various things in place that will allow you to bring over uh, some of your status and also bring over your fans. So when you start broadcasting on Rise, it's notifying people uh, on U now that that this is what's going on. So you're not kind of losing access mm-hmm. to all those fans, and then we're also giving you um, you know some of that status in the new app. But at the same time, you know, we have these millions of users on you now that we want to bring across, but we also want to reach, uh, you know, new users. Mm-hmm. It's not just about uh, you now users. We think it kind of can meet a wider set of users and use cases. So we want to make sure there's that mix and, and people that come early as content creators on uh, on Rise that never had a you now ac- account can compete and can be up there you know at the top creating the yeah. the best content because i think this many to many video is in some ways almost a different format you know where you can have multiple people kind of riffing together and and you know maybe you have a group of four people that start running you know a round table and then that's you know a really interesting content and and pulling in audience members to contribute like all this stuff wasn't possible on you now and so we're really excited about kind of like the new types of creators because there's times when we broadcast and we have some viewers make some good comments and sometimes we like to be able to just pull that person into the conversation yep like quickly because like on on google hangouts the when we use that we have to bring we have to send them the link and hope they click on it right here you can just basically just grab the person you want as part of the conversation and just pull it up into the staging area or into the room and then everybody can just yeah, converse. And then you're giving exposure to that person and all of a sudden they can start to earn, you know? Yeah. So like, we're really interested in, uh, in the sort of collaboration stuff. You see this in a lot of YouTubers kind of do collabor- you know, collaborate in videos, but mm-hmm. this is a much kind of lighter touch where they see someone who's leaving comments that are insightful so, and all of a sudden they're up on the screen, you know? And, yeah. and like, I think like one of the biggest um, kind of metrics for a good a uh, content creator platform is like how well does it create new stars you know how mm-hmm. low is that barrier to you um, kind of breaking out and people discovering you and, and yeah. this kind of many to many video where kind of people can get pulled up allows people to kind of break through rather than having to start your own room and hope people come yeah. to it yeah that's a game that's, that's a huge a game, game changer. changer yeah that is you know in, 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 is. and it's interesting you bring that up because in the the asian philosophy uh in the chinese martial arts they have this philosophy that if you want to determine if that martial arts instructor is very good or not, don't look at what he's doing, look at his students and how they perform. Yeah. So if he has a high number, a large number of students that are very good martial artists, that lets you know how good the instructor is. Very cool. So basically that you're saying the same thing is that, you know, one of the ways to determine how, how I guess the quality of that broadcaster is, is by how many other successful broadcasters that he's able to bring produce yeah 
That's yeah, all so uh, possible. That's okay. what you did with your YouTube, with all these other crypto channels. Yeah, yeah like we made that, that, that yeah. <laughs> See, we, we make, every year we make a, a video about who the we believe to be the, the up and coming YouTubers are. Cool. And the last one we made last year, well, you know, we included uh, Omar, you know, the, the, the crypto news channel, and uh -huh. back when he yeah. only had 1,000, 2,000 yeah, subscribers. Meister, I think, was over yeah, there, Bitcoin yeah. Meister, yeah. And, and, you know, a bunch of other ones. And then this year, they're all huge, huge channels. So not only did we spot good cryptos to invest in, but we also spotted good talent. Uh -huh. And, you know, so hopefully this is one of those uh, moments here, you know, yeah. where we're spotting good talent, you know. So uh, talk about this, you know, let's, let's uh, wrap up this video by talk, you know, each of you guys sharing your thoughts on what your visions and what, because you guys are working on it. Yep. So you guys see things that we don't, you know, and, 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 and we, and we want to be able to, the audience to see what you guys see through your eyes. You know, when we start with you, uh, Olivier, you know, what do you see coming out in the future on the pla uh, the uh, props platform? What do you see with Rise and what, you know? Um, so I think with this uh, economy and video capacity, I think, uh, uh, basically, we can build uh, a lot of things on on props. So I see, uh, I see like uh, potentially many types of uh, uh, video games using video and um, massive multiplayer games on video, uh, building on, on props. I think like, uh, for example, karaoke or even like new type of TV shows like new talent hunts on mobile. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think uh, we have all the pieces to assemble some this type of uh, experience. And uh, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is what uh, I, uh, I, f I see coming uh, pretty soon, actually, uh, on a props platform. And the second thing that is also uh, very important to me is I think there is a new kind of uh, uh, learning experience that we can have, like master classes. Like, for example, it could be uh, music lessons, but also, um, I think, professional master classes, for example. Crypto well, boot camp. <laughs> 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 we can do our, our cryptocurrency investing boot camp on, uh, on, on the platform. On the, on Live. Live. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, this type of thing, actually, you have an expert uh, on any kind of domain. I don't and they know. can pay us. That's well, actually a good yeah. idea. They can pay us in props tokens. Pay in some yeah. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, you, you give your master class about a blockchain, and uh, yeah. all the time you spend on camera, people access your room, and uh, this time is converted into props, and they spend props to attend your, 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 your show. Mm -hmm. They can ask uh, questions that will appear on the chat, mm -hmm. and maybe to, uh, to rank their questions, depending on how much uh, props, <laughs> or, or how much props they own, their, props, their questions so can if, be ranked. So if the audience stops paying us in props as we're broadcasting, we just end the broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to hit this this milestone to, for us to continue. Yeah. yeah. Do like so, the the charity raise. The charity raise. Uh, yeah. So, but basically, it's not just us teaching about the audience about cryptocurrency investing. But if let's say that since you guys are coders and have a technical background, you guys can actually talk about Ethereum coding or or blockchain technologies and share what you guys have learned in, in developing uh, the, the the blockchain technology. And then if your viewers, if your technical viewers like it they can give you credit for it and there's a way for you to earn from your knowledge yeah i think for me kind of what is really exciting about what's coming is is really the long tail and making that kind of more sustainable you've already started to see it with youtube with all these sort of kind of niche content that people mm -hmm. have been able to create but i think a continuation of that of you know diff you know people whether it's playing games or talking about different subjects and, and not only having that variety and, and long tail, but it being more sustainable. Okay, so when you mention long tail, right, can you explain to our audience, the ones that are not from the, uh, an English-speaking country, sure. maybe they don't know English is their second language, they may not be familiar with the term long tail means. You know, in my understanding, long tail means that the small players or the small users or the ones that, are, that don't have a voice yet, is, it, what are you referring to when you speak of yeah, long tail? I mean, if you think about TV, there was, there was, you know, a few shows that there could be and because there was only like 10 shows, they had to be on like the most popular topics and, you know, you couldn't, you know, there was a, a limited amount of people that were creating those. And then I think you have YouTube and when I say the long tail, it's all the smaller things that are now viable. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it's like a, you know, you have a graph where there's the biggest ones and then you have the long tail. That's yeah. sort of so, so in mathematics, it's like the, the power law curve, right? Where it, the, mm -hmm. the, most things uh, like in nature, they're dominated by a few big players, but then there's a really, the majority of people are in like, you know, this really long tail. That's why it's called a long tail because on a graph it just keeps on going. And, right? and if you actually add up all those little amounts, yeah, yeah. They it's can actually a large amount, but it's so spread out over such a s large number of people that it's really hard for uh, people to to monetize on on if they're if they're not in the the big part of the tail. Yeah. yeah. And so I think all that creativity and like the other thing I'd say is yeah. like interactivity. You know. Mm -hmm. Even YouTube is very much a passive. Yeah, you just consume it. Whereas mm -hmm. I think the like next frontier is people participating. You know, f whether it's from the audience, getting up, g getting up on stage. Like it's it's more interactive. Like we're actually seeing people toy around with like essentially like game shows. You know, you just sit at home and you'd watch people playing the game show, but now you can actually Play participate. Along. Participate, yeah. and I yeah. think that's kind of like the next frontier, and we're kind of very much at the front of that and have kind of designed this thing that we don't even know how people are going to use it, but we know that this tool set is very well kind of set up for that sort of thing. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Well, that's, um, okay, so let's uh, uh, conclude this video by telling the audience, like, if they want to learn more about the props uh, project, mm -hmm. right, where do they need to go, where do they need to sign up? Sure. So propsproject.com is uh, where you can go for all the information. So join the community, uh, get involved, ask questions, um, and yeah, we're kind of, it's getting, you know. In the future, when you guys have uh, updates, major updates, let us know. We'll be happy to come back and, uh, and, and take a look at it, you know. Yeah, and I mean, then, what's really excited, exciting about kind of what we're doing is like, this app will be out alongside the token, you know, it's, it's not Yeah, that, that is exciting. It's very exciting. I mean, we, we invested into projects Most three, four years ago, and, and they still they, don't have a, yeah. a working product yeah, yet. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. this this really excites us, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So um, if you guys like these types of videos, guys, make sure you guys go to www.cryptocurrency.market slash newsletter and sign up there, and that's where we send out these new research videos that we do. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys in a future video.